you are the model on a Tom Waits album cover called Small Change. <laughs> yeah, that is a weird rumor that I don't know how to clarify that because I look at that model and I go, that looks a lot like me. <laughs> Wait, what, what, was the, what was the cover? I had to see this. Oh, it's oh, a Tom great Waits. album, Small Change. Yeah, Tom Waits, and Tom I love Tom Waits. I love oh, it. Um, but, and it does look like me. But I, I don't remember doing it. And of course, I don't remember doing anything in the 70s almost. <laughs> I went straight from the 60s to the 80s, to the 70s. So hard, so hard I maybe. That, and I go, wouldn't I remember if I modeled for, you know, that album cover? But I don't remember. It's entirely possible I did. Um, I, I, I did a lot of music videos back in the day when I was a model. I did a lot of album covers. So. <coughs> Okay. Well, thanks so on behalf. It's still a mystery. I look at it, I go, my boobs are better than that. <laughs> <laughs> well, on behalf of me and uh, thousands of other, other young men, uh, thanks for pushing us over the line into puberty. Uh, <laughs>
and Elvis was playing there for the first time um, at the Las Vegas International Hotel, it was called then. And um, he came and saw my show, which was called Be Play Girls. And uh, he, uh, it, kind of a long story, one of the girls in there was dating his uh, money manager and his roadie, uh, Joe Esposito. And, and Joe invited my friend Jennifer back to Elvis's um, suite for a party that they were having. And I begged and pleaded and cried and was given to come along with her. And I was able to go. And when I got there, Elvis and I just, I, it was weird. Elvis kind of like, I guess, you know, I was 17, okay? Um, <laughs> and uh, anyway, we just started talking and hanging out. He was playing the piano. We were singing together. It was like, I don't know, it went on from maybe 2 in the morning until about 7 or 8 the next morning. And it was amazing just talking to him about life, about numerology, about spiritualism. It was really weird talking about his family. <laughs> My family and what I want to do and blah blah blah. And he told me to get the hell out of Vegas. He said, "You have to quit. You have to get out of here. You cannot live here. You're a showgirl. You're too young. And don't stay here. You'll be. I'll come back. You know, you're you're the youngest showgirl in Vegas now. I'll come back. You know, uh, 30 years from now, you'll be the oldest showgirl in Las Vegas." <laughs> he said, "I really think you can sing. Go get some singing lessons and and do something else." So I went the next day and got singing lessons and. Um, Changed my life because I did. I split from Vegas and it was. I gotta know what pickup line did Elvis use? Are you going to Are you going to Oh, he didn't have to use any pickup line. Let me tell you, he didn't have the same word. I was a huge Elvis fan. My parents were those kind of people who were the nutty Elvis fans that had like a basement full of, you know, like a little mausoleum. Elvis, it was really weird. They could be on some TV show on HBO and Elvis freaks. So I grew up with that. Was the first present I ever got in my life that I ever remember was when I was five years old. I got the record of "You Ain't Nothing But a Hound Dog," and I had myself dancing to it so spastic. It's, it's beyond belief. I'm like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like rocking out to "You Ain't Nothing But a Hound Dog." But I think that might have got me started in the whole show business thing, and, I, and it certainly changed my life because I left. I went to Europe. I went to Paris and, and Italy. Got the band and started singing and. It, all kind of went on a different path because uh, you can't get stuck in Vegas when you're a showgirl. Most people do stay there forever and, and they're too old to be showgirls and the next thing they're dealing and, and you know. So, anyway. Thank you, Elvis. Thank you. I think I can make out too. Yeah. Elvira Doc. 
Tom if you go there. Hi. Um, I was wondering who inspired you or what kickstarted you becoming a feminist and how you incorporated that into your character at the Oh, thank you. Uh, I've just always been a feminist. I mean, I really, as, as soon as I knew what a feminist was, and it was like back in the 60s when Eric John came out with Fear of Flying, and I just uh, jumped on that bandwagon because I have always felt women should, you know, be strong and have their own, own opinion. I think my dad kind of. My dad wanted a boy, I think, so he treated me <laughs> like a boy. I went fishing with him and hunting with him, and and, uh, and he was very, um, you know, he was an insurance salesman, but he like work, had a major work ethic and everything, and I think he taught that to me. And um, So when I, you know, got older, I thought, hey, why, why don't you be exactly like guys? Why, why aren't they, you know? So um, I've just been a major feminist, and... And my daughter is a big feminist. Where she's surprised that people think of feminist as some kind of a dirty word, or like, you know, feminist. It's like, oh, hi, hello, yes, I'm a woman. That means like, I, I, I think women are, you know, good. <laughs> I, I, I kind of, kind of puff you up here. Um, the one thing I really do like your style of feminism is you don't put down other women. You empower other women to be better at themselves by using yourself as a really good role model. Thank you. I mean, I yeah. do it in a humorous way. Yeah, yeah. go in a humorous way, but you're still, you build people up. You don't cut other people down to make yourself look big, but make yourself look bad. Only guys. Only guys. <laughs> <laughs> but they deserve that. I saw Yeah, sometimes. I want to. I know. Poor women. Kind of but I, I think like a female chauvinist pig. She kind of thinks women are really great, and, and, and the guys are kind of just treats like pieces of meat, you know, like, the, like a lot of guys treat women, so. Uh, but I did make a, a, a rule early on, like when I did Mistress of the Dark, when I did it on the Tales, that no guy would ever run in and save Elvira. She would always save her own ass, you know? She does it in the most ridiculous way in the world, you know? She still is like, you know, I can do this myself, you know? So, thank you, that's a great question.